it's more important for you to be the right person than to find the right person. Some of you that had a few years of experience, I'm sure that you can recall having some tough times, some difficult experiences, but didn't they really make you uh, a richer, deeper person? Doesn't life give you some difficulties, but going through them, you're really stronger for going through them? Do you think that's true? Yeah. And again, we think about love, you've heard it said before that you should, what? Love your wow. self, right. So if you can say, I value myself for everything I am, everything I'm not, and everything I'm becoming. How about that? And what about this? Can you say that I love that person I'm in a relationship with for everything they are, everything they're not, and everything they're becoming? Okay, so maintenance in a relationship is very important that you have to be able to maintain the relationship. And one way of doing that is being aware of what we call the assertive script. And the assertive script is, is, is simple, uh, but very powerful. The implications are, are far-reaching indeed. So what you want to do is comment about a person's behaviors, not their personhood. You may feel like doing that. But you know what? Uh, that doesn't help much because you don't want to put down their essence. You don't want to attack the person. But you want to let them know that it, it is a little annoying whatever they're, they're doing. And maybe you have to find the right time to say it too. Uh, when someone's angry and, and you know, uh, in a heat, heated discussion, you don't say this. I had a professor in college say, I went to Loyola Marymount, I remember he said that a good time for a couple to argue is when they're in a big jacuzzi together because you're relaxed and it's a good time. Well, you don't feel like arguing, you know. So you want to have the right time. But the idea basically here of the assertive script is this. When you, and you want to be very specific about what you're talking about. When you, and I'll use the example of uh, cigarette smoking. So say, look, you're a wonderful person. I love you. You're great. But you know, when you smoke cigarettes, okay, now, you want to be uh, very uh, specific. You want to say, when you smoke cigarettes in the morning, you know, like, you want to be as, as specific as you can. Then you come over here, and then you're taking responsibility here. You're not saying you're a bad person for doing this, but you're saying, you know, when you smoke cigarettes, I feel sick to my stomach. I'm sort of allergic to smoke. Okay? And I'm not saying you're a terrible person. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying when you do this behavior, I'm taking responsibility. This is how I feel. I feel sick to my stomach. Uh, I feel I have a headache. And then over here, you may know the because, or you may not. Because I have an allergy, I said because it makes me sick, because I, I think it's a, a habit that reminds me of my father when I was a child. Whatever. You may or may not know that. And then you ask for change. Could you please smoke uh, at a different time? Now, that's difficult because people have, you know, a smoking patterns that are very difficult. But do you get the idea that when you do this, I feel, you know, because and ask for change. Now, just because you ask for change doesn't mean you're going to get it. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. Maybe with an employer. If the employer maybe uh, yells at you in front of some customers, you know, you can't go up to the employer and just say, you know, when you yell at me in front of the customers, I feel very upset because you remind me of my father. Just don't do that again, please. Oh, fine, very much, you're fired. <laughs> you know, so you have to know the right time in saying that. And again, when you give a compliment, it's also very good to give compliments. Um, because when you tell someone that they're a great cook, well, uh, then they have to be a great cook all the time. They say, you know what, you make the best roast beef. I really like the way you make your vegetables. You want to be very specific. When your children, or anyone you compliment, uh, same thing. You know, oh, you're a great student. Say, so, you know, you did really well in that math test. Or as far as playing sports, you say, you know, you did a great job in that second inning 
when you, you hit that double. I was really proud of you. Or I like the way you caught that fly ball. Or I like the way you really hustled out there in the fourth inning. So you're very specific to what the behavior is so the person doesn't feel like they have to always, you know, uh, perform. And, and, and it's a complete experience. Now, I kind of want to end with this idea, um, but before I do that, I just want to talk about feeling words, that I have a list of feeling words. Can some of you um, name some feeling words? Because, you know, a lot of times, you, you, I do this in the religion class, psychology religion, you kind of have to become aware of, is this a thought I'm having? What kind of thought is it? You know, it could be a thought of revenge, it could be a, a fantasy thought, it could be kind of a, a thought uh, that's a thought uh, about something that you have to do in the future. So you kind of become aware of thoughts. Then you have emotions and feelings, which are different than thoughts. And then a third area is like you have wishful kinds of thoughts that are different than, the, you know, the kind of thoughts that might be a thought in terms of planning or revenge or jealousy or thought about... Uh, assignment that you have to do in the now. But what are some feeling words? Can you shout out some feeling words? I'll give you a hint. I feel proud. I feel friendly. I'm sociable. I have, uh, uh, let's see, I feel faithful. I feel uh, empowered. I feel sick. What are some words, just to get you aware of the importance of feeling words? Yes? Hurt. Okay, good. I feel hurt. Okay. Good. Passionate. Passionate. Disappointed. So you know feeling words. Now keep in mind that pain in the past is depression. Pain in the future is anxiety. And pain in the here and now is hurt. And you want to have complete experiences. Because if you have a residual of people just using you like a doormat because, you know... They're just, you're just passive, and, and you let, you, for, the, for peace, you just let people, you know, you don't want to argue. Well, you, you know, you don't want to be uh, aggressive, but you also don't want to be very passive. And assertive is letting the person know how you feel now. So again, pain in the past is depression, pain in the future is anxiety, and pain in the here and now is what? Hurt. 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 So you let the person know, when you do this, I feel hurt and then you kind of keep it in the here and now, as opposed to building up and complaining about something that happened six months ago. Six months ago, my wife burned the toast, uh, you know, as a, a good friend of mine, Dr. Boy, used to say. And, and, you know, she didn't make the chocolate cake the way I wanted for my birthday. And then you just hold it in. And, and that's a real problem if you, you know, if you don't stay updated with everything. So kind of keep that, mind, that in mind, the idea of having a good language uh, to complete the experiences.